Rollin' Thunder, not to be confused with Rolling Thunder, is a Zamperla Thunderbolt model at the park at Oa. This is a park that opened fairly recently in 2017 down in Foley, Alabama. It's fairly small. They only have three roller coasters. This is their star attraction, and it's quite possible that you've already ridden this ride at another location. The prototype opened at Luna Park in Coney Island, New York back in 2014. This is, however, the new and improved model. So while they have the same layout, you'll notice some changes to the vehicles, which most people people unanimously say make this one an improved version than the original. I personally have not done the original at Coney Island. I went the year before it opened, but this is going to be my full in-depth review of this one, though I imagine most of what I will talk about will apply to the original as well as if you've run any other variations of this model. And believe it or not, there's actually quite a bit to discuss. This is a really interesting ride. Going into it, I did not hear very many positive things, so my expectations were not high. I went in expecting this to kind of be a crappy ride. Which is surprising because when you look at the layout on paper, it actually looks very good. It's an out and back layout filled with inversions, airtime hills, a vertical lift hill, a 90 degree drop. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? Long story short, the ride was better than I was expecting, but it's definitely not perfect. So I'm gonna go fully in depth into that and explain what I think could have made this ride better, but also what the ride does do well. So I wanna start things off before we get into the layout by discussing the trains. And inherently, I believe these trains are the core issue of why this ride is not better than it could be. When you board these vehicles, you can almost feel the cheapness of it. You can tell it is not a high quality vehicle, which is very weird. I don't think I've ever given that critique before, but I feel like it's noticeable with these trains as you board them and you're like, wow, this does not feel like it was professionally engineered. I mean, I'm sure it was, but you have to remember Zamperla, who's the manufacturer of this ride, is mainly known for doing flat rides. This is the the largest roller coaster they've done, so they've still got a ways to improve. So what about this vehicle is not great? First of all, the restraints are very strange. It's basically a vest and a box. Yeah, a box. This box literally sits on your lap and it can kind of tilt back and forth so that it adjusts with your thighs. And it's very weird. I almost liken it to the Superman The Ride restraints at Six Flags New England. That kind of feels like a giant box on your lap. So this is similar. The plus side with the restraints is that they don't come further down you on the ride, which is nice. I think the ride would be a whole lot worse if the restraint can continue to get tighter on you as you went through the layout. But because of the way the restraints are designed, they aren't really airtime friendly. You will get airtime on this ride, as I'm going to talk about later. But these restraints are not very accommodating for that. Another note, there is a seat belt with these restraints. It doesn't really restrict you or anything, so I didn't really feel like that was an issue. It doesn't go across your lap, it's just straight out in front in between your legs. So that's what makes up the restraints. Very, very bizarre. I've never seen anything like it before. But you know, another weird thing about these vehicles it's three across. It's probably the only coaster I've ever seen that has three across seating. Very, very bizarre. I can't say that I really like it. I mean, traditionally, roller coaster cars are two across, four across, you know, nice even numbers. Inherently, I guess there's not anything wrong with this other than it might mean your party could be split up or you'll just get some really weird configurations sometimes. But if you're a family of three, I mean, hey, this is probably the perfect coaster for you, am I right? So yeah, definitely strange vehicles. And you know, when I was at I Appa, they had some of them on display and they talked about how in the newer generation vehicles that Zamperla is coming out with, they've reduced some weight and they're continuing to make improvements with the vehicles. So I imagine if another one of these variations of the Thunderbolt model popped up, the trains would be even better than this one. So that is the plus side, but as you'll notice just throughout the general layout when you ride it, Rollin' Thunder is very shaky. It almost feels janky and I think that's what goes back to when I was talking about how it feels cheaply made is the whole vehicle is just kind of shaking throughout the ride and I don't believe it's a track issue. There is a moment on the layout where the track has like a pothole or something that I'm going to get to but any complaints concerning this ride and its roughness I believe is directly related to the trains. So anyways enough about the train let's talk about the layout. You take a left hand turn and start up a vertical lift hill. I love vertical lift hills and this one is great. You crest over into a vertical drop and you know I would say this is a good drop but here's the thing. There is a trick part way down the drop. You don't notice it as much in the front row, but you do notice it significantly in the back row. It's very weird because you start to free fall and then you can feel the train just catch itself and slow down a little bit 
and then keep going. It's very unusual, definitely not fond of that. I don't think it completely ruins the drop, but it is one of the reasons why the drop is not as good as it could have been. If you are sitting in the back though, you will get some nice ejector airtime going over that drop. So your first element after that is a vertical loop. This is one of four inversions during the ride. This is fun. You get some decent hang time, but it's not the most hang time you'll get during the layout. That comes a little later. And straight after that loop, you have a zero G roll. And these are always fun. This is a great element. No complaints with any part of it except the transition up into the inversion. So the actual inversion is fine. However, in the moments where you're exiting the vertical loop and rising up into the zero G roll, there is a crazy pothole and it is rough. It is bad. It is by far the roughest moment of the ride. You almost feel the thump as you go over it. I have no idea what happened there but it is not a pleasant moment of the ride. Probably the worst moment on the coaster. So following that zero G roll, we have a wave turn. And you know, I'm a big fan of wave turns, but I gotta say this one was not quite as good as I was expecting. It almost looks like you'd get some sideways airtime, but that isn't really the case. It almost just feels like a high banking turn. I'm glad it's there. I mean, it's a fun moment. It certainly looks cool, but I will say I was a little underwhelmed with that. But luckily, there's a pretty fun moment coming up and that is the turnaround. This is the furthest point of the ride. It's when it switches directions and starts going back is also the third inversion and this is where you get the best hang time on the layout you flip upside down and hang there and you start rotating slowly out of it so you're almost getting hang time at a slant which is a very cool sensation and then you swiftly dive low to the ground almost a little bit of straight track and that's when you hit the return trip and this is when the coaster has some pretty ridiculous ejector airtime and it's not just in one instance there are multiple airtime hills here and one final inversion i think there's definitely an argument to be made that the airtime hills on the return trip are the highlight moments of the coaster. I was impressed at how much you fly up out of your seat. Again, I think if it had better restraints, it'd probably be even better than it is. But that being said, they are still pretty nice. The airtime hills are profiled perfectly. It's optimized for that ejector airtime sensation. And that's what sends you into the break run and back into the station. So like I said in the beginning, it actually is a really fun layout. I think layout wise, it rivals any Gerslauer Eurofighter. If you're a fan of those rides, then you'll definitely enjoy this one. I think where the Eurofighters come out on top is in the train design. Those cars are just in infinitely superior to the ones that Zamperla designed. Granted, many of those Eurofighter vehicles do have a bulky over the shoulder restraint, which can lead to some head banging. And you know, one of the advantages with this one is even though it has some rough or rattly moments, because of the vest design, you don't get any head banging, which is absolutely a plus. The vehicles certainly could have been worse. So in total, I think I was able to get five or six rides on Rollin' Thunder. The ride did pass my expectations just because they weren't very high, but there are certain things that I think Zamperla needs to work on if they really want this model to shine. So for its final score, I'm gonna give it a six and a half out of 10. Great layout, terrible trains. But I wanna hear from you guys, what are your thoughts on Rollin' Thunder as well as the general Zamperla Thunderbolt model? Let me know down in the comments below if you've had the opportunity to experience one of these rides, if you agree with my thoughts, and of course, if you're new to the channel, I'd love if you could subscribe. I do coaster reviews of rides all around the world. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.